Thanks for coming today. We are releasing two scientific expert opinions on CSIRO's GM wheat. We were alerted to a safety issue by a researcher who identified possible uh, DNA RNA sequence matches in the GM wheat and in human beings in an enzyme silenced in the wheat. Uh, this safety issue was then extensively studied by our two scientific experts who we will hear from in a minute. What we are asking CSIRO to do, and unfortunately in recent years they have been uh, focused more on profit than on public interest, we are asking them to release all of their safety studies on this GM wheat, if they've done any at all, and to also release the precise sequences of their silencing technology. Uh, this will enable our scientists to do further bioinformatic sequence matching. There is already significant matching and we need to see those sequences. Full disclosure from CSIRO is essential at this stage. Over now to our scientific uh, experts. The way in which this wheat has been modified has never been put through a validated, comprehensive research assessment to prove that it is safe. The technology is too new. Therefore, it's important that we have a battery of studies that are conducted on the wheat to convince uh, people, and myself, scientists, regulators, that the wheat can be eaten by people. What we found is that the molecules created in this wheat, intended to silence wheat genes, can match human genes. And through ingestion, these molecules can enter human beings and potentially silence our genes. We found over 770 pages of potential matches between the genes, these two genes in wheat, and the human genome. We found over a dozen matches that are extensive and identical and sufficient to cause silencing in experimental systems. The findings are absolutely assured. There is no doubt that these matches exist. What we can't say from a bioinformatics analysis, which we're limited to doing, is that there will be an adverse effect in humans. But from this information, we know that it's plausible that there will be an adverse effect, and therefore that's why we're calling for a particular battery of experiments to be done before humans eat this wheat. Well, this G genetically modified wheat uh, variety is designed to silence a particular gene in wheat to change the carbohydrate content in the wheat. Jack's shown that the uh, gene, uh, the product of the gene, can actually be absorbed into the body, and that, if it's absorbed into the human body and actually acts on the human body, might also silence a similar gene in people, and that could have serious health implications. If this genetic modification in the wheat is absorbed into the human body and affects humans in the same way that it affects the wheat, then it will mean that there will be some significant changes in the way that we store our carbohydrate, our glucose in the body, and that could have dire consequences. We need to make what's called glycogen in the body in order to be able to live, in order to be able to wake up in the morning after an overnight fast, in order to be able to have a burst of energy to run across a road. And if this silences the same sort of gene in us as it silences in the wheat, then, well, children who are born with this enzyme not working tend to die by the age of about five. And adults with this problem just get kind of more and more sick and more and more tired until they get very, very ill indeed. Before this comes near any human feeding studies, you need to undertake thorough animal safety assessments where you actually look to see if the animals get sick. So you need to see if this, um, this genetic modification survives digestion and gets into the bodies of the animals. You need to see what effect it has on them. You need to do proper long-term toxicology studies over at least six months. You need to check for cancer. You need to see if there are any reproductive problems. And you need to check for allergies to wheat to see if that's changed allergies to the wheat.